Our devotional is for Saturday, May the 20th, 2023. The title, The End is the Beginning, Getting Ready to Depart. Now, our scripture reading, Deuteronomy chapter 31 and chapter 32. As you open your Bible, you're going to realize we only have one more chapter in the book of Deuteronomy that will be completed tomorrow. But for Deuteronomy 31, I invite you to open your Bible and follow with me. Now, we're near the end of the study, obviously, and I'm reminded of a verse from the Song of Moses found in Psalm 90 and verse 12. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Now, keep in mind as you read Deuteronomy 31 and 32 that the balance of Moses' life can be numbered in days, if not hours. This great leader, arguably one of the greatest of all time, was coming to the end of his earthly sojourn. So as you have your Bible, notice with me Deuteronomy 31, verses 1 through 8, what I would describe as Moses' exhortation to Israel as a nation and to Joshua as a leader. Now, Moses, mindful of his own mortality, reminded the nation, as you read verse, uh, chapter 31, verses 1 through 2, that he was 120 years old. And then he said, and the Lord said, Thou shalt not, Moses... Go over this Jordan. Or with the urgency of a man who knows he will soon be passing, Moses exhorted the people in verse 6, Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them, the enemies that are over in the other land. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Moses will die, but God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so, then inside of all the people, in chapter 31, verse 7 and 8, Moses affirmed Joshua as the leader whom the Lord had chosen to lead Israel into the promised land. Now, look at verse 9 through 11. Here we have Moses' challenge to Israel's spiritual leaders, specifically to the Levites. Now, these are the custodians of and the teachers of the law, and they are challenged to keep the law and the commandments before God's people. You'll notice in verse 10 and 11, the command that every seventh year, the priests were to gather the people together, and we read the law before Israel in their hearing. Every seven years, there was to be a public hearing and a reading of God's law. And then verses 12 through 15, God's confirmation of Joshua's succession. And so we find in verse 14, the Lord come into Moses, thou must die. And call Joshua, rather, present yourselves in the tabernacle of the congregation that I may give him a charge. And then we read in verse 15, the Lord then descended in a pillar of a cloud and stood over the door of the tabernacle. Now, in verse 16 through 18, God gives a revelation of Israel's disobedience, that is, those things that will come to pass in the future. Now, with Moses and Joshua standing at the door of the tabernacle, the Lord revealed that Israel, after Israel conquered the Canaanites, took possession of the land, the people would, and I'm going to read verse 16, go a whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land. That is, the idols of those people, Canaanites, living in the land. And verse 16 also is the sad prophecy that Israel would break covenant with God. They would depart from his law and commandments. And then we read in verse 17 and 18 that God then warned that he would hide his face and abandon Israel to the consequences of their idolatry. Now, in verse 19 through 21, we see where Moses is instructed to write a song. Now, this song was a memorial, a prophecy against Israel. And so the Lord commanded Moses, write a song, verse 19, teach it, the children of Israel, that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. Why a song? Because a song is often easier 
to remember the words, the music, and the lyrics. And then continue in verse 20 and 21, the song was to serve Israel as a testimony of God's faithfulness and how he had fulfilled all the promises he had made to their forefathers. And so we read in verse 22 that Moses wrote the song and taught it to the children of Israel. And then as you come to chapter 31 of the last verses, we want, once again we see a public charge to Joshua and to Israel's leaders. And so Deuteronomy 31 then concludes with Moses giving a charge to Joshua, preparing him. He is going to now be assuming the leadership of the nation. And Moses then commanded the, the Levites, take the record of the law that he had written in his own hand, that is Moses, put it inside the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. It is to be a perpetual testimony. And then in verse 27, he then stated what the Lord had revealed to him concerning the hearts of the people. Moses said to the people, I know thy rebellion and thy stiff neck. Behold, while I am yet alive with you this day, ye have been rebellious against the Lord, and how much more after my death. In other words, as Moses considers the fact of his imminent death, he wonders and sadly understands what will come of Israel. Now notice in Deuteronomy 32 then, the Song of Moses is recorded here. Given the length of Deuteronomy 32, it's a very long passage, I, I would invite you to consider just a brief oversight of Moses' Song of Praise, his worship, and of course, in this passage, the forewarning of things that would come to pass. And so, verses 1 and 2, we have the preface or the introduction of of the song declaring its purpose. And then in verse 3, we find that Moses then wrote, I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. And then as you look at verse 4, you'll see the attributes of what manner of God was the God of Israel. Well, he is described in verse 4 as the rock. Just imagine a massive rock, strong, stable. Also, that the work of God is perfect. It's lacking in nothing. That the ways of God are just. He is a God of truth. He is a God without iniquity. He is sinless. He is a God who is just, that is righteous and innocent. And finally, he is a God who is right. What does that mean? He is straight. He is upright. Now, after confessing, the sinful character of the people, Moses then memorialized the Lord's compassionate care as a testimony of his grace, his love, and his mercies. You find that in verses 7 through 18. He also, Moses, recorded the tragic prophecy of the nation's wickedness and God's punishment that would one day follow. And then verses 34 through 43, the Lord is said here, and prophetically speaking, would use other nations to judge Israel. And he promised he would not, however, altogether forsake Israel. And then after rehearsal of the song, he had written in the ears of the people. In verse 44, we read in verse 46, his challenge, Set your hearts into all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children, observe to do all the words of the law. Well, a closing thought for you as we conclude today's devotional. And it is this, when Moses finished speaking, we read in verses 49 and 50 that the Lord commanded him, Now, Moses, get thee up into this mountain of Aram, unto Mount Nebo, and behold, look out, gaze upon the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel for a possession. And then verse 50, And die in the mount, whether thou goest up. As you read verse 51, Moses evidenced no protest at the Lord's command, and he was again reminded he would not enter the land. Well, as Moses would climb that mountain, he would gaze out from Mount Nebo and look upon the vastness of the land that the Lord had promised Israel. His sin prevented him from leading the people into the land. However, the Lord had chosen Joshua, 
And now the mantle of leadership for Israel rests on him. As a reminder, you can find four Bible study questions to encourage you to dig a little deeper in today's study. And I encourage you to go to heartofashepherd.com. There you will find this devotional written and the Bible study questions. God bless you. And thank you for being a part of this Heart of a Shepherd. Bye-bye.